Good morning. Today we are in Miami, Florida, and we're only here for one day, and we know we cannot hardly scratch the surface of everything the city has to offer. So we decided to pick one spot and focus on that. Yeah, we're ending up in a place called Little Havana, so we can learn all about the culture, the food, the cigars. One of the local shop owners we talked to got us in touch with who they say is the best tour guide to help us out with that. And so we're gonna go meet him right now. We are Crystal and Terry, and we've always loved to travel. However, the high demands of our full-time jobs make it increasingly difficult to take any time off. So, we're giving it all up. For the next year of our life, we'll be dedicating ourselves to full-time travel. We're so excited about this next chapter, and we really hope you'll join us in this amazing adventure as we leave the life we've always known to live the life of our dreams. From the moment our feet hit the sidewalks, we could feel the excitement and the vibrance of this incredible neighborhood. From the colorful buildings and the friendly people to the live music that rings out, you know you're in a place that's made for fun. We enjoyed the open air markets and especially the very freshly squeezed juice that our tour guide was kind enough to offer us so that we could get the nutrients we needed for the walking tour ahead. Spanish, blending everything together and combining words and speaking too fast that you don't understand. <laughs> That's how we speak Spanish in Havana. Then they say that the most perfect Spanish is to is speak here on the promise of come away. So it's more neutral like that everybody can understand, more Spanish like. but it's not 100% a Cuban cigar. It's what is called Cuban exile cigar, right? So, the process. First, you're gonna make the filler of the cigar that is the inside, that is basically a rolling technique with three different leaves. How long have you been rolling cigars? 34 years. 34 years, wow. Little time. So cigar, what? what that's a, that's in that? Spanish. That's just a Spanish word for, for the thing, rolling. For the process. rolling. So cigar the cigar is the roll. Guys, we just finished the tour with Yoel and it was amazing. This is like the best thing we've done so far. And the tour was actually supposed to be like two hours. We've literally been down here in Little Havana for almost four hours now, just looking around and kind of retracing our steps of places that he took us and that we wanted to kind of see again. And it was just so great. One thing we learned too was that the all the chickens here actually came from Cuba, but as they escaped people's yards, they just started populating. And so now all the chickens that you see in Little Havana are like free roaming chickens and they're actually protected by the government. So they just hang out here and they live here and it's really cool. I like that. Cuba. Uh, I learned how to properly smoke a cigar, which I didn't know I was doing wrong all these years. Apparently I was. But we could not recommend this enough. If you're gonna to come to the area, you don't know what to do, we're gonna link Yoel's information down below. 
contact him. It's a nice smaller tour. We saw several other tour groups with like 12 to 20 plus people. Uh, the intimacy yeah. of this one, we got to do some little extra things that you might not get to do in most tours. So definitely check this out if you come to Miami. For lunch, we came to the famous Old Havana. Decorated with Cuban folklore and traditional furnishings, this open air restaurant was the perfect spot. I had the Bistec de Palomilla, I think I'm saying that right, which is steak marinated in lime and garlic, and it was delicious. Terry had the ensalada de atún, aka tuna salad, which was super fresh. Tuna with olives and red onion. Yum. We topped off our lunch with a couple of Cuban coffees. And Cuban coffee is known for its sweet taste. And now I am wide awake. We noticed that the bartenders were preparing glass after glass of sugar and mint and that's because they sell over 300 mojitos a day. And what better place to enjoy a nice drink but on their patio outside. Hey guys, while Crystal's getting ready for us to go out tonight, we thought I should give you a little backstory on where we're going and more importantly, why we're going there. We're gonna go to this place called the Boho House down in downtown Miami. You can look it up. It's a really chill little place. It's a restaurant and a bar. It's got a big outdoor space. But why are we going there? Well, a few years ago, I had the opportunity to be cast in a web series that was being shot in southern New Mexico when we still lived there. It was done by a very talented uh, filmmaker named Julian Alexander. And it was released in 2019. It started touring the film festivals around the world. It got a lot of great reviews. But 2020, as you can imagine, shut all that kind of stuff down. Well, now that things are starting to open up, so are some film festivals. And we just found out a few days before we were gonna be in Miami that Bad Juju, which is the name of the series, has been nominated in four different categories at this year's Miami Web Fest. And it's going on at the same time that we're here. So that's where we're headed tonight, and that's why we're headed there. Florida Keys and today we are driving from Key Largo down to Key West and our hotel's in Key Largo so we had to get up pretty early and it's a two-hour drive from Key Largo to Key West. I didn't realize that the Keys were that far apart and that Key West was so far south from the mainland but um, the drive is absolutely beautiful. We have a sunny day today. Yesterday was pretty cloudy and rainy, so we were kind of concerned that it was gonna be the same way today, but the sun has popped out, so I think we're gonna have a really great time down in Key West, and we're gonna take you along with us and see what we can see. First stop is lunch. We came to Pincher's Seafood right off of Duval Street for lunch, and I had the seared ahi tuna, yum. And for some crazy reason, Terry ordered a hot bowl of corn chowder. Hmm. Anyway, lunch was good, but we're ready to hit the town. Let's go. We're gonna head 
head over to Mallory Square now. Oh. What? Kermit's Key West <laughs> Key Lime Pie Shop. Pie. Pie time. <laughs> okay, I guess we're having pie now. All right, this wasn't on the original agenda, but we were in Key West, Florida. I found a place that said Kermit's Key Lime Pie Shop. We've got to stop and sample Key Lime in Key West. And just for the record, the pie was delicious. So now that someone has had their pie fix over here at Kermit's, <laughs> then we're going to head over to Mallory Square for real. Hey there guys, uh, we said we were coming to Mallory Square and we did, but due to a lack of research on my part, this place doesn't really open up until around sunset, like four or five o'clock. So there's more activity, music, street performers, shops, things like that, which isn't going on right now. Sorry about that. However, I did find the Key West Sculpture Garden. It has 36 sculptures of the most famous and influential residents of Key West. Guys, we are, well, first of all, we're melting. We're not used to this uh, humid heat. But secondly, I mean, just look at this guy. A lot of these trees I've noticed have these sort of just, I don't know, haunted root system. They're all just sort of creepy looking trees. And this is right here off Mallory Square. I don't even, I, this is crazy. It, it looks like it's all roots. It doesn't look like it's a real tree. It's just all roots of a tree. Pretty cool though. We've been walking around Key West and it's such a neat, neat island. The architecture of the homes, the buildings is beautiful. The foliage is just so unique to the area. And there are historical landmarks peppered throughout even the tourist districts, which, you know, as you would expect, lots of bars, restaurants, and tourist type shops around. But it is hot. It's really hot. And humid. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Living in New Mexico for four years, I'm used to the dry heat. I'm not used to all this. You can probably tell, I am soaked, I'm melting. We're soaked. Oh my gosh. It's nice, but you know, June could be a little hot down here. Yeah, so, so. Pick your months wisely. We're gonna wrap it up there, guys, because we're melted. <laughs> See you on the next one. We are utterly soaked. Our hair, my hair, Terry has no hair, is disgustingly like sweated through for at least an inch. We're ready to go, guys.